fucking S4, no matter what happens in this game, to have that steady build up into the Dominator. You don't have a solution for literally creep army outside of just Timbersaw running in, getting the Whirling Death and Chakram, which isn't necessarily what he'd want to do as well, depending on how these fights break out. So the big wild card is really just how well your Beastmaster does and how well your Timbersaw does here. Well, let's see, Jonathan. Game one here between these two teams. Maybe an early fight to break out, maybe not. Both sides just going to hang around their mid-T1 towers for now. A lot of master T heroes as well, by the way, on, uh, on the side of these two hustlers. They're Kunkka, Morphling, and Timber. In fact, even the Disruptor, level 30. So signature heroes coming out from these guys, unless they just play too much Dota, which is probably also the case, is Ponlo. He's going to spot out the Illacor, but I don't think this is the position he wants to be in right now. We'll be able to outrun the Tiny, however. With the tree, uh, with the tree grab being leveled up here from Thea Lacour, he can't really make any plays, but he will do a lot of damage here to Ponlo. It is going to be a 3-for-1 trade the bounty. So, in the end, Alliance, they, they come out on top. Like, you force Ponlo to go back to the Fountain. He's not even going to do that. He's still going to stay within the lane. So, no real dramas here for him. And while we're here, John, we'll start off with the mid lane. Of course, it's Zantic going to be in the mid lane on the Kunkka against Chuen on the Pangalier. How is this matchup meant to go? It It is pretty good for the Kunkka. Maybe the first few levels are a little bit easier for Chuen. You can harass a little bit more with the Shield Crash, but your uptime in Tidebringer is just way better than any of the spells on a Pangalier. So you're, you're able to just twack away at that melee core, no problem for its antic. Like that is the one concern. And Chuen can't be as slippery with a swash. Once you do get the value point in X mark, you can threaten to just drag him back. Support rotations can be a little bit better for the side of the Hustlers, but you have the Disruptor, which isn't particularly amazing on rotating. You're going to be relying more on Teal Lacour to try and make a move out with a Kunkka when he does have his control up. And that is something the Tiny can excel at. So a little bit easier for the Kunkka. Rotations do feel potent from lines, but you don't have the best setup for, say, the arrows from Hanskin here, so it's a little bit tighter. Speaking of Hanskin, that top lane, Charlie and Hanskin are going to be up against Hakoda and Devai Lama. John, I, I want you to give me a prediction right now. Are we going to see someone get glimpsed back from a T1 tower this game? Because I feel like every game we've watched Disruptor, it's happened where somebody forgets Disruptors in the game and they just get glimpsed back to the fountain. Is it going to happen this game, what? Sure, I mean... It Someone's bound to make that mistake at some point. Whether or not it's going to be from a death up top, I don't necessarily think so. Oh, pawn low. It, I don't. The bottom lane, he's very low right now. Yuma just chasing him down, but they don't have the waveform. Salve going to be up from pawn low. He should be just fine to just keep running. Even enchant a creep while he's at it and starts dishing the harassment back the way of the Lacour. The very annoying chain lightning creep to, to be able to spam some damage out. In fact, Yuma has to be very careful. <laughs> Luckily that chain lightning does not bounce when you are within fog, but man, it's it's just scary watching it. It is. It, it's it, no mana quite yet to cast another, but they don't need it. No. He's got the kill. Ponlo. It, it's the thing with this guy, right? Like, if there's one hero <laughs> this guy is good at, it's micro heroes like Chen and Enchantress. Top lane in the meantime, Hakoda is gonna go down. So you'll lose the disruptor and Charlie immediately will hand out some tips. Fair enough from Charlie. And already, Alliance off to a fantastic start. 2-0 their way. Yeah, this is the kind of start you want. Like, you're you're owning on your off lane down bot. As Forest Mansion gets some really good bullying onto Yuma. It's not the comfiest lane for the Morphling to farm into. Even up top, like, not necessarily what I expected when you shift the Murana over, but there is still good damage flying out. I and mean, he just runs in with Starstorm. That's a decent amount of magical damage to also apply pressure along with the Lucent Beam. So you can shove them away. A little bit low on HP now. No regen for Hanskin, so he's going to have to go for the reset. Which will provide maybe a moment of vulnerability for Charlie. But the pull does mean they can't really dive him. And the creep wave will be shoved in quite a fair bit. So it's not the comfiest position for you on the offlane of Hustlers. You do have level 2 reactives. So you're a little bit more durable, but... With no whirling death value points, going for a kill just, it feels a lot rougher. Yuma. The stun's gonna come out here from Ponlo. Not gonna amount to too much, just a bit of a harassment stun. 
tends to do that though, this uh, Ponlo, he, he's that kind of guy that just annoys you with the little plays he makes, even if they mean nothing. It's all about the mental warfare with this man, as when I was just casually chasing Thea Lacour, this is going to be a very annoying thing for Thea Lacour in this tiny, during the laning stage, you just can't do anything against this end. Every time you come close, he's just going to chase you down freely like this. In fact, he'll go for the enchant slow. Stun is going to land. I don't believe he'll have enough damage, but he's going to be really close. And Thea Lacour is indeed going to survive. But you'd almost rather just leave him like this on low HP anyway. Yeah. He's not going to be able to really commit too hard. Again, without the tiny running up and trying to cop some sort of harassment out or just try to force a move out, Yuma's not really free, free to just farm. And Honlo now gets a pretty annoying creep to deal with as well. Well, they're going to try and move in. The Illicor's very low, though. He might just be dead, but no. Yuma's going to zone them out. Make sure they can't keep going. But this lane is just so devastatingly challenging for D2 Hustlers. Like, Yuma's trying his absolute best to get some farm in, but he's only at 17 and 5. And S4 will just continue chasing him down along with Ponlo and this creep. Not quite enough yet, but now Thea Lacour, oh, he came back in. Oh, he's gone. Once that enchant landed, he had no chance out. And Alliance, they will continue dominating this bot lane. You know what's really nice about having that mana burn creep as well? The mana aura when you're going like Axis kind of harassment on oh, the Beastmaster, it feels best. so good. Like, you already have the Basilius up. You just reach entry. You're going to be able to spam that, those axes every single time. Chuen does go down mid lane. Pretty massive pick off here for D2 Hustlers now. Hakoda with the rotation. Ensuring that does happen. And, well, that's something good going for D2 Hustlers. As Xantic is going to get the tip here from Hakoda. And that's your, your mid pango dying here to the Kunkka, which generally means. The mid lane is going to be infinitely harder now for Chuen because he's going to be one full level behind. In fact, make that two now. Yeah, it's just a little bit more until Chuen hits at six. And this is to be expected from the matchup. Again, Kunkka just has a lot better of a time constantly harassing out the Tidebringer. You can't really poke back on Pangolier all too well with his wash in comparison. Mana cost cooldown just feels a little bit worse to play with. So that is a shining point for Hustlers. If Adzantic can get his good start, uh, maybe work towards his early items, he can have his presence be felt. And that's when you can start to tie in with how tanky your Timbersaw is going to feel, just with high levels in Reactive and a Ring of Health up. It is pretty hard to shove them away. The next thing you're going to have to look out for on Hustlers is probably the level 6 timings under supports, particularly the 6 of Hakoda. If you can get that Disruptor Static Storm at a good time, and then you connect all your team fight. That's where it can be a bit of a challenge for Alliance fighting into this. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mid lane, a bit of harassment here from Atzantic. He's getting uh, quite a bit of damage off into this mid tier one tower. Highest CS on the board is the Kunkka, and highest net worth on the board is Atzantic. So. Kind of a bit of weight on Atzantic's shoulders to be able to make some space for his side lanes because it has been a pretty rough affair. Again, especially for that bottom laners. They are going to try and move in onto S4, but Thea Lacour, it looks like he's out of position once again, is going to go down. And now Yuma in trouble. Sponlo does have Enchant up in one. Could use it, but Yuma... Well, he has the stick charges, which should mean enough mana to use waveform, though Ponlo is still chasing him down. Atzantic has rotated. X is there. Boat will fly out, S4 will cop it, and Yuma, he'll get right to work with the follow-up stun, though S4 is still trying to fight, but it's not going to be enough. A very necessary rotation from Atzantic, and it does pay off. Relieve some pressure on your Morphling, allows a little bit more farm for Yuma, he can just kind of recover in lane with a ring of help, so he doesn't mind too much. It does leave room for Chuen here, though. Oh, very nice little swashbuckle there from Chuen. Hakoda to go down, just on the edge. Doesn't end up denying the double damage rune at the very least, so neither side is going to get the rune. Very, very sad for both Alliance and, uh, and D2 Hustlers, but nevertheless, Chuen gets himself a, a little bit of a consolation prize here with the with the Disruptor kill. 2-5, to five, though. Very slight net worth lead. Bottom lane, Ponlo has been caught out this time around, so Thea Lacour and Yuma able to get a bit of revenge here on the edge. Yeah, not the biggest kill, but still something meaningful. Kind of compensate for their slower lane. You did need a way of getting a little bit more EXP on Teal after being shoved out of that lane quite a fair bit. 
So it's necessary, for sure, for the Tiny to try to hit his timings as well. They've got the Disruptor again, Hakoda. Gonna go down as Chuen has rotated. The thing is, they are moving towards the Vile Armor, but I don't think there's much of a chance to kill him off. He's actually moving in onto Charlie. Charlie's still trying to go for the fight. Chuen, he's already used the Rolling Thunder, and here comes Xantic. Charlie, he's the target. The X was there into the boat, and he is just dead. The Vile Armor just buying so much time for Xantic to make his way over. And now Hanskin, he'll be the next target, but he will at least be able to leap away. And sadly, Charlie almost kind of getting baited by his own team as they were making their way over to help out, but it's against the Timber. He's not going to die. It's a little bit optimistic as well, considering Chuen didn't really have mana and already used the roll. So they didn't have the best way of just trying to collapse onto the Vai Lama. And we did mention that D2 Hustlers, their push isn't the fastest, but they have managed to take a lot out of that top tier 1. And the Xanthic is just going to kind of commit for it and at least force it out a little bit. And Alliance do see the opportunity to rotate mid. And Ponlo does have that annoying summoner creep with two sets of skellies, so this is not going to take too long from Alliance in comparison. Well, luckily for them, they don't, they don't really have a Sage creep here, so D2 Hustlers is going to be okay with this. Fair bit of damage, but ultimately without a Sage creep, it's not going to be anywhere near enough. It uh, seems like D2 Hustlers will be around to defend anyway. It's kind of the thing. Let's hold on a minute. S4 bottom lane. Gonna find himself in a little bit of danger. Forced to pop the roar to be able to run his way out safely. Well, they, they even popped the Moonlight Shadow just in case he needed it. So he's gonna be alright. But the Vile Armor kind of gets what he wants. He just wants to defend this bottom lane. And he'll just sit there casually doing so. No reason for him to leave this lane for now. This Hustlers... Ow. I mean, they're gonna apply a little bit of pressure onto the mid-tier 1 tower. Looks like they will keep that Siege Creep alive. And Alliance... I mean, then they won't be forced to ro rotate too many people over. They'll be all right with this. I do like this lane swap coming out from the Hustlers. Right, you finally give Yuma a very free lane up top. You just farm in. Hans can, can't really threaten the Morphling solo. And the Vailama's at the point Ponlo? where he can just cop any spell. Nice little stun there from Ponlo. The Alakor, though, is still going to move in and does secure the kill onto the inch. So Ponlo will go down once again. And Xantic now on a killing spree on the Kunkka. And that mid-tier one tower looking a lot more open as Chuan. Oh, that's a perfect glimpse out from Hakoda. Right on the edge of the Rolling Thunder. He is gone. It, it does reveal the vision they have on that high ground with the glimpse back, but it's a perfect kill. And now the mid-tier one tower's down. They take the mid. They open up the map. Alliance, that early lead they had, has bled out. It's mainly at Xantic. Kind of soaking up all this farm, otherwise farm distribution is actually fairly equal across the board. But for the side of Alliance, you're, you're not really geared up to fight just yet. Your output on Chiwen isn't the highest. Still building into the defusal. He's rushing it just after brown boots. And this is a point where Hustlers does feel stronger. Again, the Tirmasov feels impossible to push out here. Oh, Chiwen. Nice rotation. The Elecor is going to go down immediately as they are still trying to get Hanskin. But he will drop on the on the disruptor. Hakoda gone to boot. They just took such a long time trying to hunt down this Mirana that does cost them two two kills on themselves. Both supports going down, and uh, that's not too good of a feeling here for D2 Hustlers. Yeah, I, I feel like they might have been able to take those kills if they had a core, but again, both were still down, and the Vilam is just playing bot. So you can't really connect with him, and you don't want to have to drag Yuma in. And that does cost him. Not the biggest kills to give away at the same time, you know, considering Alliance's position. And that boosts them massively. And they're going to go for a smoke play out now. They've got the roar ready. They've got the arrow from a mile away. If it connects, the kills. And the kills shouldn't be too hard to find. The Vailama is still a tough target to go for, but they're in this area. I don't know if he's really killable. Like, he's got a hold of Defiance up now. Even with the, even if you have the Eclipse up, I, I just don't think it's feasible, and Charlie's not even with them at the moment. Meanwhile, top lane, Chuen, can get caught out. Static Storm will hold him down. Another nice setup here from Makoda, and Xantic will have plenty of follow-up damage. They are trying onto Divine Lama. Plenty of stunts coming out, and it seems like they do have the damage. Pondo with the impetus shots, really doing most of the work there on the edge. They will secure a bit of a trade across the map. 
I like the understanding from Ponlo as well. He's not going for the nature's attendance. He's all in on the damage. He knows he's the one consistent source of damage onto that timber saw. Is that but he just Yeah. He's booting uh, yeah, a Midas. It is. Yes, this is the Ponlo that we know and love, Mike. This takes me oh, back. Ponlo. This takes me back. You know, last time we saw him, Aster Ares, his Chen with the Ags, the martyrdom. Who builds that item? Yeah, Ponlo does. And now, <laughs> I mean, he knows Bloody he has Ponlo, to scale. Ponlo, man. Feel a call. May get caught here on the tide. He does get caught by Rogue Arrow from Hanskin. Will go down. Ponlo dropping rather low himself, but Divine Lama now is the target. As they'll drop Ooh. the Eclipse on his head, and he's gone. Tips out immediately right towards oh, the Oh no. And that tier one mid is gone. <laughs> Alliance really feeling it in this game one. They know. They're, they're doing everything right, Mike. Movement across the map, farming patterns, item buildups, and the mental warfare. They understand. You, you talked about it. We know the Vai Lama is a very he's a he's a very expressive guy. So you get into his head. You try to do that. You get every advantage you can, Mike. It's a game of Dota. Every single advantage counts. You know what? If Alliance wins, I need to have a chat with Ponlo in the in interview. <laughs> I need to ask him about this damn Midas build up. I, I might need to scold him live on uh, live on air, Jonathan. I'll be honest. Scold him? He'll scold you for scolding him. <laughs> now we're going to get roasted by Ponlo if he's on. I'd love that. I need to talk to that guy. Oh. I mean, it's still a best of three series away. T2 uh, Hustlers. 7 to 11 now. It's only a 1k advantage the way of Alliance. Xantic's still the biggest guy on the map on the Kunkka. Yuma on the Morphling, not too far behind either. He's, he's going for that classic Lincoln Sphere build-up. So D2 Hustlers, like, while that last team fight was a little bit of a mistake for them, it's not the end of the world where, yet. As Team Alliance... They know where Yuma is. ...gonna head towards the north. The Courier has the Lincoln Sphere recipe, but they want the actual hero. They'll ignore the Courier altogether. Smoke's not popping, man. It's a full recipe. They'll give it away. Yuma's still running. He'll realize they're there now and he'll go for the TV oh. play up at the arrow. Hanskin's right on target. Perfect arrow from Hanskin. And the hands up here from Yuma. A little bit early there, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they let the Lincolns go true, you know? They, they try to play that smoke as long as they can. I'm sure it pops under... Just a little bit of vision coming out there from Hustlers, but they get the chain control. And you know that they have a Lincolns to deal with, so no surprise factor for Yuma now in the middle of these fights. So, you're doing everything right. Alliance, they're just swinging around. It's still a very even game, mind you. 7 to 12. The farm distribution of Hustlers is, is still, again, very even across the board. Only Xantic and Charlie kind of leading the pack here. And they've got the full Kaya and Divide Lama. So he feels a lot better trying to go for these burst plays up front now. If he can just sustain and stay alive. The last time we saw him play, or at least, you know, get caught out down bot, he didn't manage to pop that Hood of Defiance active. Just because the chain stuns came in from the fog. As long as he manages to pop that on, he is... It feels like he's going to be next to impossible to kill unless you kind of get the Eclipse onto him. So, you've got a lot of room here for the Vi to play really the Vi. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess this Ench is still a threat with the, the pure damage from Impetus, but as the as the game goes on, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to actually get that damage off. Until he builds a, a Hurricane Pike Dragonlance, which he's doing right now, by the way. He's queued up a Dragonlance. He's going to do it. Ponlo is the carry this game. And Xantic. <laughs> Divine Llama rushing forward. Oh, screw you. Oh, Ponlo, he's all right. He's gonna go for the TP play and he'll be just fine. <laughs> Yuma, in the meantime, apparently ends up dying. He sure to follow. Hey, you just get the chain stunts, you get the clips off, you clean up. Like this Morphling is just not that durable. Lincolns can only give you so many stats. He needs way more right now. Full strength, full agi is just not durable. They will find Hanskin as compensation, but you're in a much better spot for Alliance. Again, you're constantly hunting down that big scaling hero on the Morphling. You're hitting your timings. They're playing pretty damn well with cooldown of Eclipse, actually. It feels like Twin. you've gotten pretty good back-to-back -back use. Oh, nice juke on the boat. Twin barely Ooh. avoiding it. Glimstack is there into the kinetic field. He's still going to drop anyway. That was a very close call, though. Had Hakoda not been around, 
That was a free, uh, that was a free kind of escape for the Pango. Nevertheless, he will still go down, but Alliance is still in the stronger position. Like, this Luna is eventually going to feel like a problem. So he does have the BKB up now. Once you get to that, that Eye of Skadi timing later on, Yuma is probably going to find himself struggling a little bit against this Luna. Yeah, it's not going to feel amazing for Yuma. Um, he's just rushing the BKB now. He knows he needs the full defensive items just to keep trying to stall out, maybe join his team and just feel a little bit more durable with the boat, run around. He has a timber saw to front line for him. So there's not too many issues for him in kind of getting some space out in these fights first and coming in to get these kill shots in. For Alliance though, I mean, it's not just the scaling of Charlie. Like legitimately, Ponlo scaling is going to be an issue. The fact that he's going so greedy and isn't really being punished for it is a major cause of concern here. Feel a call. Caught out. He is probably just dead, and he will be. The tiny is gone. Media up here by Alliance, and they could think about Hakoda as well, because they get some nice vision down on the high ground, so Hakoda does get spotted. Kinetic Field trying to keep himself safe. Ponlo still chasing him down. Hakoda's going to try and TP out. The arrow, it's not going to make it. He'll barely escape, but he will lose his full courier with a bunch of items on it. The T1 top tower is still going to drop, and if you are Alliance, you may be thinking about starting Roshan. Yeah, you, you've got all your big team fight spells on hand. You've still got Roar, Eclipse, Roll, even a Moonlight Shadow to kind of dip outside Roshan and try to force something out as well. You still want to pick off, if you like, but it's it's very risky to try to Rosh up against a Kunkka with the early shard and the static storm threat of Hakoda. And Xanthic does have his fresh BKB up. Can be a risky rush to just force now. Mid lane. This falls going to show himself here. They're going to make the immediate oh. jump. The Lacor, he got a double avalanche off, and now the static storm is going to make it impossible to fight back. Two down already. They found a third in Ponlo. He will also be on the chopping block, and suddenly D2 hustlers are the ones looking at Roshan. As they will rush in. And with three heroes down, there is no fighting this. No way they can dip inside. If you maybe had a blink from Chuan, if it was brave, you could try to steal it, but it's a massive risk. So first Aegis goes the way of Hustlers. Big win for them. They've got a safety net now for Yuma to just keep farming without you know, losing Charlie. out all too much. Will this John Charlie? Oh, oh. oh Eclipse. Uh, the fog. The Lacour, he's going to juke it out. Oh, the Lacour juke the whole thing out. He only took two loose of beams. And now Charlie, he's trapped up. But his team is rushing. To try and help him out. It won't be necessary. It seems like the two hustlers realize they need to back off. And they will. Everyone gets out safely. You know, I mean, Eclipse, you know, it's a two minute cooldown. But I don't think it's the biggest deal for Alliance. I think they're okay. It can hurt them. Like, that is more damage up against these tanky cores. You need as much damage as you can get out. And Ponlo's trying to go for a core build, but he's not quite fully there. So, if you want to really just burst down the Kunkka ASAP, burst down the Timbersaw ASAP, and that Luna Eclipse is going to be a big factor. They don't mind too much. They're still going for the push. You've got the Thunderhide creep. You can beef up Charlie quite a fair bit. And you can just melt the objectives so damn fast. Okay, it's such a wonderful creep. I know you're not the biggest fan of the Ancient Thunderhide, Mike, but the value in Friends is no. huge. I'm kind of scarred because when I had this creep once, I thought, right, because I was playing with a Meepo at the time, and I thought I could use the uh, the buff on all his Meepos at once, and I why was would you wrong, think and that? that hurt my feelings, so I, I never know, picked this, uh, this hero. Think that? This... Well, I don't know, John. I don't know. <laughs> now I never take it again. As S4 gets caught out, Glimpse back is there. He should just be dead, and he will be. S4 is gone. And now the Thunderhide will also go down, which it deserves. Let's be frank. Oh, it's a dinosaur. Why would you want the dinosaurs dead, Mike? They're cool. Why would you wish extinct, that? Jonathan. Get rid of them. But they're cool. Don't you want them back, Jurassic Park? <laughs> you know? I'm going to be honest, Make John. it real? I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I have never watched those movies. Wait, you've never watched even the original Jurassic Park? No. Never? Not, the Not once. Thing. Well, no, to no, be fair, I, I've, I, watched I, clips, I, I've watched clips of it as a kid, but never the whole I, thing. 
Oh, okay. This is actual well, fact. I'm not joking. Well, to, to be fair, I did try watching Jurassic Park 1 like, fairly recently. I did find it boring. So, eh, yeah. I, I can't fault you. But dinosaurs. And I'm smokes. not going to lie, as a kid, I was scared of the movie. It scared me, Jonathan. Don't ask Thank me you. why. Thank you, Mike. Sorry, right, the dinosaurs aren't real. They can't fight you. D2 hustlers. <laughs> They're going to move in on the Hanskin. The morale is gone immediately, and now the Vim's back on Ponlo. We'll mean a secondary is Ponlo. He, he can try to run with the untouchable. He's just going to stand his ground and fight back. He knows there's no way out of this. And Zantic with a double kill. Yeah, there's some big kills coming out. I mean, it's stacking up now. It's all adding up for D2 Hustlers. 2k lead under their belt. Alliance probably not feeling the comfiest playing in to the Aegis of Yuma. And Yuma having the BKB causes a lot of issues for Alliance. It doesn't feel like Charlie's ready to just stand there and right click. Not until that full Scotty's up. So the spell immunity is going to provide a lot in survivability here for Yuma. Fortunately, S4 has found another Thunderhide creep. The dinosaurs still keep rolling, Mike. No, not again. Yes. Get rid of, get rid of this damn thing. It's the point. Come buff all it, your teammates. Ah, oh, I can't buff up my team. I thought it was a free uh, assault curious. Yeah. Mikey, read the okay. damn description and learn your heroes, okay? <laughs> Understand the game. You've played this for how many hours? How many hours, <laughs> Too Mike? Too many hours, John. Too many hours. There you go. Alliance, they're grouping up down bottom. It seems like they want that T2 bottom tower. There is going to be rotations, though. Like, D2 Hustle's not looking to let this one go for free. Maybe. The thing is, Alliance, are there is a full stack, basically. Five heroes are down bot right now. So there is going to be TPs down towards the bot lane here from the Lama, who does now have an Aghanim Scepter up, so he's got some really crazy damage with those Chakrams. Oh. Twen, he's already in. Eclipse was thrown out onto Thea Lacor, so he's going to die in the Tiny immediately. Is they're going to try and find a trade here on the side of Alliance, and they will catch the Mirana. That's at least a one for one. But D2 Hustlers, they want a bit more than that. Hakoda, he is gone, but Ponlo will have to probably trade his life away for this. So his team is there to back him up and he's taking what? a long time to die. How have they he? taken the edge bait? It seems like they have. Polo is out of there for now. He'll make a run for it. In the meantime, S4, he'll pop the run to Vailama. Static Storm even being dropped by Hakoda here onto the Enchantress, but he's not dying. Polo is still alive. He is still making his way out of this. There's Charlie. Charlie's in danger. Polo, no. he will finally die trying to back him up. And Charlie will also get caught out. Eventually, he will drop. And as for, he's not out of the woods yet either. He is dead. Thea Lacour is there with the stun in time. A, a very prolonged team fight, but in the end, D2 hustlers, they come out on top. And this is where the hustlers really shine with their lineup. These prolonged fights. I mean, the timber saw just keeps healing up. You get full value from the rum buff down the ghost ship. You forced out the eclipse onto your pause four. I mean, Tiny doesn't mind getting torn apart there as long as none of the team is going down with him and no one did only the supports had to go so alliance there's just a severe lack of damage once eclipse is down and even in the middle of these fights when you have eclipse running it's, it's going to spread to multiple heroes your luna is just not ready to right click for the team you know and ponlo i mean he's not ready to right click either he does do good damage but until he's like truly a core or at least has something like the Hurricane Pike up. He's not safe in front of all of those heroes. So a big win for the Hustlers. Aegis has expired, but they find the big team fight win anyway. And now Yuma's gonna have an earlier timing on that Scotty. And that that's just scary. Like this Morphling has so much stats on hand, it's gonna be so hard to burst him, even if you get the jump. The double protective item build for Yuma paying off massively. Having the Lincolns and BKB forcing choices out from Alliance and trying to pin him down or pin the Lama down as well. And Alliance just, they just don't have enough damage. Like this is Morphling, Timbersaw, Konka. And you have a Pangolier, Beastmaster, and Luna. Like they don't have output until the Luna can really right click. Yeah, but he's going for the Scotty now. Even then you might still be lacking damage on this, uh, on this Luna. 
Like, we'll see. Because once you get to the point where you can farm up that silver, the uh, the silver edge, I think things change very drastic, drastically for the Luna, but for now, it is a bit of a rough time. Spawn low. Immediately bursted down by Divine Llama, who does not tip him back. <laughs> Being very, very quiet on the side of D2 Hustlers, just not even bothering to try and press that tip button. Meanwhile, Chuen. Being chased down top lane is probably going to be okay. Does have a TP available if he needs it. Should be just fine to get his way out of this one. No Alliance, they are just pushing down the bot lane. Like, this is all you can do right now, I suppose, is just try to force them back. Force the defense of the bottom lane. Yuma will be there on the Morphling. He'll take care of it himself. And Alliance, they're just basically buying time for their Luna to get to the point where she can actually fight this Morphling. Bottom. And with the Moonlight Shadow, they could look to set up, but it, it just feels a little bit dangerous. With the Skadi timing of Yuma now, you probably don't want to fight into this guy. Not without your own Skadi. And that's uh, that's still 600 gold away here for Charlie. He keeps having to give him Pondo stealing farm from his core. Oh my god, he is too. <laughs> he actually was. <laughs> oh, Pondo, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, he's the damage, right? Like, not even joking, he is the output of this team right now. He quite, he quite literally is. As he does get caught out, he is gone. There's your damage. I mean, you want farm, 21 but... to 17 now, John. Yeah, it's, it's looking good for Hustlers and... Alliance, they had a timing. They still do. The Scotty's gonna come out and Charlie. He needs that full Silver Edge to really start dishing the hurt. And Chu Wen is also trying to go into his Ags. We do have BKBs ready on pretty much every single core. But again, in prolonged fights, you still feel better on the Hustlers anyway. They spot out the Roshan here as well. They should know what's up. And you have your own BKB in the Vilamas. You can't even burst the Timber Saw with your magical outfit. If you could beforehand, that's certainly out of the question. Roshan not going to take too long to farm up. And aside of Alliance, they're not even going to try to contest. They don't have vision in the area. Just gonna go for free once more for D2 Hustlers. And that is a big win for Hustlers. Alliance are smoked up, but into this Aegis, it feels a bit scary. I mean, it does. They're gonna meet in the mid lane here, it seems. Yuma, he will wave form forward. Sitting duck, but again, BKB, Lincolns, Aegis. All these defensive items on Yuma makes it kind of hard to even think about making the jump on him. So they're just gonna leave him be. At least for now, but Yuma's going to them now. Hanskin. Immediately leap away, but Yuma will leap right back towards the Marana. And Hanskin now being slowed up by the by the Skadi. Does go into the Moonlight Shadow, but is not going to make it out. Thea Lacour able to secure the kill there on the Tiny. And it will and truly seems like D2 Hustlers want to fight. They, they don't want to sit back and farm anymore. They're ready to go. They have no reason to wait. They've got everything they need. They know Alliance can't oh, take... Pondo. Oh my god, Pondo. That's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. One hit from a Xantic just removed three quarters of his HP. And that's the thing with the Vile Armor as well. Like, he throws out those two Chakrams. You are at least losing half your HP pool. Yeah, he's he's got so much heart, but he can soften them up for Xantic to line up that last shot. You don't have that much HP on the Enchantress to begin with. And he's got the Force Staff and Dragon Lance just needs a Hurricane Pipe recipe, which isn't too far off. It, it doesn't feel like it's enough. Like, it actually feels like you need a BKP on your Enchantress. Which, there's not enough room to farm that up, for sure. And Chuen's farming. You're getting some farm Charlie S4. S4? Oh boy, S4. He's popped his BKP, pops the raw, but none of it matters. Hustlers just moving in. They actually caught Charlie in that kinetic field static storm, but they don't have the follow-up because Chuen is holding them back. In comes Polo, but the damage output just doesn't seem high enough. They'll force the BKB out from Charlie because he needs to afford the X back. But now he's got no BKB available. In fact, Chuen also forced the BKB to avoid the tidal wave pushback. But that might just allow Ope, allow the high ground to be taken now by Hustlers, knowing the BKBs are down. In fact, they are going to back that's off a... for now. Hmm. Just fire him up a little bit more. You've almost got the uh, next item ready to go for Yuma. You just kind of wait it out. Oh, excuse me, Axe. Yeah. Once the Axe is up, just steal the attack speed of the Luna. Run him down. 
no worries in the world here for your morphling and it is fully up so now you can go it's a lot of time and it just yeah you know just top up just a full reset just a morphling tp'ing back with the x back you do have the ags up now on chewing but with bkb's down a little bit longer it feels can not the best cooldowns aren't too far off now though so they can't force the fight and the side of d2 hustlers you, you really have nothing to be scared about You've got both back up, you've got the full AC on at Xantic. You've got all the damage in the world coming out from Yuma and the Vailama as well. Yuma from trying to move in. Tier 3 tower is down. Try and fight somehow. Twin pump faking the uh the role at the moment. Not committing quite yet as they have lost the, the range barracks. Yuma, still an absolute beast to have to try and deal with. Apollo's trying to get it done himself. The Morphling just so damn tanky is now Divai Lama having enough just jumps right into Twen. Yuma, he's just gonna go back. Oh, feel the core. Nice toss back. He found Charlie. BKB was popped, but everyone's just running away from the Eclipse. Charlie, he'll find at least the core. But now with the Rolling Thunder and Eclipse down, you might want to just keep going. Divai Lama removing most of Polo's HP. There's a Zantic not able to get a good Tidebringer off, and Divine Lama's gone. A Zantic at least able to TP up. But they get a little bit greedy in the end, and they do get punished by Alliance. Yeah, and they've still got the output. They get, yeah, not not the most ideal Eclipse, but you manage to clip out Tio Lecor. You run down the Lama. You've got, again, decent output on Ponlo. And he, he is going for the BKB. He's... He will actually be a core, like he already is at this point. His output is a pretty significant part of the fights. Like he's doing as much damage as Charlie is right now in that last fight. So you want to be enabled in that hero. Chuen, no, he just he can't survive the damage output of Yuma at the moment. Very unfortunate here for the Pango. Down for about 70 seconds. Two hustlers, 14k advantage now. I mean, this this Luna pick, I, I don't want to blame it on the, the draft choice of choosing this Luna, but it hasn't felt that great this game. It's kind of the reason why yeah. the, the hero is just not a meta, right? Like, you just require so much farm for this, era to, for this hero to feel actually kind of scary. Yeah, the build-up is quite a fair bit. I remember when it used to be more popular, we likened it almost like to, like, the Alchemist, where... You kind of want a huge gold advantage on this hero to really feel good. And you never really had that for Charlie at any point in game. We expected the lane to go a little bit better up against the Saw. They were finding kills on Hakoda, but no one else. And the Vai Lama died a couple of times, and it's a Timbersaw. S4. BKB force from S4. The Vai Lama is still actually just stalking him right now. On the Timber, S4 is going to see him. The Vai Lama, Chakram's out. Glimpse is there, they've got the vision, S4's gone. He's down for 50 as the tips finally start coming out. Dakota will give it back the way of S4. And now, surely, that bottom rack is open for the taking. Yeah. Not gonna be easy to defend without that roar up. No buyback in S4. We're going a little bit ham here. It was the bot rack. We'll go for the uh, the mid tier three. You don't even need to wait for ages. You understand how far ahead you are. The Lama. gonna be okay with the uh, the X back here. That might be enough for for D two. I say that they've got a sight the vice coming out on uh, the, on Atlantic, so even more lockdown now for the side of D two hustlers. These BKBs are, are getting very low in duration for the side of Alliance. It's uh, it's looking like a very, very tough game. Like, you get Scythe the Vice, you're as good as dead. There is no survival. And pretty much all but no one saves. BKB now is down to six seconds. For Alliance, at the very least. You, you, you just don't have saves on your supports. Like, it's a Moran and Enchantress. They kind of want to be more on the offensive. They're not able to really line up those shots all too well in the lines at the moment. Getting lack of damage. 
It, these fights just go for so long that you got a lot of value from your boat buff. You got a lot of value from your timber saw. You must allow it to kind of dip in and out if you don't fully control him as well. Feels like you might need more control. Maybe just try to go for the shard in S4 at some point. He is going for Octarine Blink, which is necessary. More uptime on Roar is just going to help your class by a huge amount, but even a dive bombing Hawks to at least maybe break a Lincoln Soft early on could be one way of baiting out some early BKBs and then try to hold on to your BKBs for as long as possible before engaging here. You have to take some really awkward angles to win out these fights in the lines. Like the high ground fight was them kind of forcing Hustlers to just constantly go in and out of a high ground, dive behind those tier trees, behind the racks. They kind of need to just pull weird stuff like that. Like force Hustlers into a really weird position, but they're just playing safe now. They play X and push, and there's no counterplay to that unless you have yields and you don't really have any yields carriers. It's actually one of those sickening strats where there's just like literally nothing you can do about it. Apart from the Yules, like you kind of mentioned as Alliance, now realizing that that game is in play, they're going to go for a big smoke up as five. The big team fight to go their way. Silver Edge Neil is now up on Charlie, so he's got a lot more damage available on this Luna. Hustlers, they'll just take the time to farm up these tier four items. They're not concerned, they'll just hold their position in this dire jungle around their own vision. They will realize exactly where Alliance are because they do send the, the Lunar Mantra Illusions out. Mind you, of course, Alliance always has vision with the Hawks out from S4. Oh, Vailama just being such a nuisance. Like, he knows he can't die with the X-Pack. There is literally no Yule Scepters available to, to try and cancel that off. There is nothing. There's, there's no risk for Hustlers to just poke and prod like this. So the smoke fails. They just X push again. Range racks are set to go. And sure. one more push. Very balanced play. Yeah. This is the way to do it. You always play the safe way. And Yuma, he'll go ahead. He'll just take the range racks for himself. No problem. I mean, you, you're going to have to do something about this. Alliance obviously did try with that five-man smoke, but... It's just so hard in a position like this because you want to just defend high ground as you usually do in any other game. But with this X back, it's kind of hard to rely on that. As now, with a rolling thunder, they do find a Xantic on the Kunkka. They're going to try and burst him down, but he's got his BKB off, so the Eclipse will do nothing. Yuma's right in as well. S4's trying to get some form of damage out onto a Xantic, but he's taking nothing. Ponlo comes in, but he is all alone in this endeavor, I think. As everyone else is just running out of there. Chuen is gone. Ponlo is on the run now. Hanskin will do the same. But the Ench is almost certainly just going to die. Ooh. Three down for the side of Alliance. D2 Hustlers. They will move back to the high ground. Even with the Lunar form now to make matters worse. Yeah, I mean, it's the one thing the Morphling always has, right? With the Ags, he hits so much harder when he turns into Luna. The push just... Because more ridiculous backdoor is kicking in at the least, so yeah, not much is coming out with the Luna form as it fades. But they're going right, they're going straight for it. Just clearing out the building onto the tier fours. They understand Alliance. There's not much they can do about this at this point. Like they just don't have the output. They'll get the buybacks going though. Yeah, it seems like that's all D2 hustlers wanted. Just get the buybacks committed and just back off. I mean, there is still a, D a tier two top tower that is going down as we speak, so they couldn't go for the megas. And of course, Roshan is available. So there's absolutely zero reason to play risky here. If you are D2 Hustlers, third Roshan of the game. There's an Axe Blessing available on this one. I just wonder who takes it. Oh, well, they're going to give it to Hakoda, Hakoda naturally. All right. I mean, it, we always talk about how valuable the Disruptor Axis, I feel like most teams still don't give the free Ags to Disruptor. Like, there's an argument to be made for Adzantix, but I like what they're doing. Now the fights go a lot scarier. If the Static Storm does connect before the BKBs fly on, you're just not running out. You're probably just dead. Oh, they could break out to a fight right now. Yuma. 
Not gonna move in to Violama. He's the first one. Waveform out onto S4. They dropped the Static Storm, but it's only on one, and S4 already got the BKB off, so they are gonna lose Hakoda immediately. It could be a semi-decent teamfight for Alliance. Problem is they've lost the Charlie. Buyback. Charlie is down. No buyback available on the Lunar. And so Hustlers, they can just keep going. Without the Lunar available, you are just sitting ducks now. It's Ponlo. We'll go down with the rest of his team. That'll be a dieback on the inch. And all Alliance can hope to do is push out the side lanes and hope for a defense to come from Hustlers. And it seems like D2, they're not going to go after the uh, the Ancient immediately. They'll take the outpost and they might actually address this top lane before they try going back towards the, the Dire base. It's a lot of respect for what Alliance can do, but... Maybe they just didn't realize the Luna has no buyback available. She didn't manage to pop Eclipse, so I guess the buyback life is massive. Considering that BKBs are down for a little longer, so they don't, they don't force the issue. They 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 respect the fact that it could have been a Luna buyback available on hand if she didn't buy out. They did lose their Kunkka as well, so you lose out in the hex, you lose out in the ghost ship and the rum buff. <laughs> what? <laughs> Drop your axe uh, as it is returning. Well, what does that mean? I have oh. no clue. Uh oh, Timber has Timber a has a oh. bump. Where he cannot use his axe. Ah. Wait, what? What bug is this? He can't use his second chalk, his first chakram? Hey, let me try <laughs> follow. <laughs> let me try. <laughs> let him sprink. That, that's interesting. Done. So the bug is what? He dropped his ags at some point, judging by what Xantic said. And now he's picked it back up, but he can't use the second chakram. Is, is what I believe is happening. Like, yeah, I'm the... thinking it's his... Maybe it's his original Chakram? Because it's... Do we have the icon cooldown? switched? I... Feel like I they have... Remember. I can't remember. I can't remember either. I feel like second Chakram does come out first. But... This makes much more sense in my head, so it also doesn't look wrong. Okay. I... I forget. I forget. I haven't touched Timber Saw Ags in a long time, and we haven't seen it in a long time as well. So, I'm... Well, we'll find out. Interesting. I mean, it doesn't bug. matter, does it? Yeah. As it kind of does. The bug gets resolved. Ah, yeah, true, true. I th the bug no, no, I'm saying the icon painful. switch around doesn't really matter. In, in, you yeah, know, if yeah. I'm wrong, all right. Yeah. Hopefully, it get. Hopefully, it's fixed. This could be. Well, I mean, to be fair, 33k up. It doesn't feel like <laughs> the chakram is your biggest issue right now. Although it has been melting pawn low, but shouldn't yeah, make it's... too much of a difference. It's just a handicap now for, for the Violama. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I, I can almost guarantee the people, like the, the players at Alliance, are probably sitting there like, why are these guys even pausing for this? Like, well, why is this a problem? Just play the game. Yeah, that's what I'd be saying. <laughs> I'd be like, really? Like, you're this far ahead and you still want to, like, fix this damn bug? I mean, uh, I respect it. Key. Obviously, they have a lot of respect here for Alliance. You know, they, they don't want to risk losing this game. It's very important for, for D2 Hustlers. I mean, they, they took out two heroes. They still respect the fact that, again, if Luna has buyback, Eclipse flies out. The PKBs are in cooldown for a little bit longer. You get punished. So they're playing it safe. And Alliance is still 2-1. You know, they're a team that if they find a way to win the series, <laughs> they're still in contention. This is oh. not the game for me to say that. It's, uh, yeah, 33k lead. You know what's Dota Plus saying? 99% chance for Hustlers. Correct. Yeah, maybe in the next two games, you know, not this one for sure. But if they no. find a way, Mike, they they and if Hustlers find that loss, then there are a lot of ties for those top two slots. Yeah, well, I've got good and good and bad news, Jonathan, for our support players. Good news is uh, we're about to hit level twenty-five on this Luna. Bad news is he bought the tomb, which is very infuriating. Let me tell you, as a support player myself, uh, this happens. happens all the time. Yeah, but you have to understand your timings, Mike. You have to in understand the timing of when Core should be buying tomes. Right? No, did, I'm, did I'm the main character. Did someone argue Jonathan. about this? I'm the yeah, main well, character. Well, you, you and Ponlo should stay in a room together and talk about how your lives are amazing. How important <laughs> you two are. Ponlo is going to one-up you every single time, man. Yeah, I mean, this guy bought... This guy literally rushed Midas and Pos 5 inch. I, I can't compete against that. Anyway, yeah. moving on. They fixed the bug. <laughs> Yeah, it's fixed, then he gets his hex out. And so more control coming through. 
I'm still seeing him drop the eggs, unless I'm bugging out now as well. I'm gonna drop it for a moment. Something happened to my icons. Yeah, he's oh, dropping. You are it. right. He Maybe is dropping. It's it. not fixed. He's still only using the second chakram as well. Ah. Yeah, I. I, I kind of want to know now. Is it fixed or not? Like, is he just gonna play with the handicap? Anyway, we're about to break out into a high ground uh, defense attempt, I believe, yeah, from the line. Yeah, he's only using so second chakram. Huh. Well, hold on a minute, John. They're, they're trying to go high ground. We'll, we'll, we'll have a look into this in a moment. D2 we're hustles. We're going high ground, but the boy is just running around. <laughs> <laughs> Testing out his I chakram, can't go so I have my to look second at chakram, it. chakram, guys. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> he's trying. He's trying something. No, you are right. He's literally only using the second chakra. And every time he it's comes nice. back, he gets an item icon on top of his head for some reason. Charlie? Are we bugged? No, I don't, I don't think so, but we could be. Huh. Alliance, they're holding high ground. Ready to initiate. Twin, looking to move in. Does get a nice Rolling Thunder initiation. We'll try to burst down somebody immediately. It's going to be Thea Lacor. No, it's going to oh, be Nakoda. Thea Lacor will follow. Alliance. The best fight they've had so far, I think, is they've got two down already, but Yuma's proving to be such a huge issue as Chuen is just going to drop. This Morphling is just so huge. Ponlo's gone a boot. Charlie's trying to get some damage up, but just Yuma's taking nothing. He just keeps going for more. Divine Lava in onto the Beastmaster. That'll be S4 gone. Charlie, slow it up to an absolute crawl. Still trying to man fight Yuma. It's just not happening. He is down, and that's going to be it. GG is called. D2 Hustlers. They will be able to take game number one. There's Alliance. I mean, they look good for the first half of the game, but sadly, this draft just doesn't end up paying.